Hello, this is Gary Pinnell, and we'd like to start our Bible study today. We will be in John chapter 10, and I know that uh, you're probably familiar with that, how that in Psalm 23, it, it says about the shepherd, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. It's from the perspective of the, of the sheep. In fact, uh, Phil Keller um, wrote a book and he has written it from the sheep's perspective as a shepherd for many years in Africa. Uh, and he was able to write a beautiful book, Psalm 23 by Phil Keller. And that, let me recommend that. And think about Psalm 23 as we go through John chapter 10, because Jesus says that he is a good shepherd. And isn't that neat to think that the good shepherd came down from heaven to this earth to save us when we as sheep were in trouble. We needed help. We couldn't save ourselves, and uh, sometimes the sheep would get off in the wa close to the water, and uh, their their wool would soak in so much water that they couldn't get out. Sometimes they would be turned over upside down, and they can't couldn't get back over. But the good shepherd would come along and help them out, and then sometimes the sheep in Psalm twenty three would be attacked by wild animals like bears or uh, lions. And uh, David talks about how he spared them from that. And Jesus is that good shepherd. He is the one that we trust. And we uh, love him. He loves us. He loves us first. And so we love him. All right, so let's get into this John chapter 10. And it says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he does, he goes before them. <clears throat> and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, well, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of a stranger. Several things that I would like to mention there. And that is the doorkeeper is the Holy Spirit. Um, and we, some of the sheepfolds maybe had an actual door that would open and shut and be locked or at night so the uh, sheep couldn't get stolen. But some of the others that I'm told about, they actually, the shepherd himself would lay down in front of the door there so that nobody could get in. They would have to go by him in order to get in to steal the sheep or to hurt the sheep or whatever. And so that's just wonderful to think about, isn't it? That Jesus is that door. <laughs> and uh, so uh, that's what we see in this passage here, isn't it? And that he is the shepherd. He's the one that he's the one that died for us. Uh, 
And he's going to point out that a hireling, person that's just into it for the money, uh, they wouldn't die for the sheep. Jesus wasn't into it for the money. He didn't get any money for that. He was here to save us because he loves us. But he is also pointing out, and the religious leaders see this too, he's pointing out that they're into it for the money. They are into it for the wrong reason. They, uh, and as we've said before, there's been many false teachers here, even in the United States. And they were in it for uh, sometimes sex, the into immorality uh, with the people in their churches. And I just heard recently uh, that they, uh, even in the, the Roman Catholic Church, it's uh, some of their higher ups and so on are into homosexuality. And uh, there's other people that are having their teaching and they, they say, oh, we're teaching prosperity and so on. Well, there is a correct prosperity teaching, but then there's other people, they say, okay, uh, give me all your money uh, or give me, you know, hundreds or thousands of dollars and then I uh, guess what, uh, I'll, I'll help you out and, I'll, and God will bless you for that. You just give me your money. And one time my daughter was at a meeting where the pastor was, or the speaker was coming and, and saying, God has told me that each one of you is supposed to give me like a hundred dollars or something like that. And I was talking to her, I said, well, that's not of God. I know the church there, they can't even fix the roof of their church. And here an outsider comes and uh, they, he wants the money. And uh, no, uh, God, God's work done in his way will not lack God's supply. And so these people, though, are into money. They're into the wrong reason. And all of these leaders, except for Joseph of Arimathea and except for Nicodemus, were into uh, their uh, ministry, supposedly, for the wrong reason, either for the people to get the admiration of the people, to become famous, or to uh, get money, or for immorality. And uh, so this is the reason that most all of them were there for. They didn't care about the sheep, and that's what Jesus is saying, that he is the door of the sheep. He is the only way that people can go to heaven. And it's through his death, burial, and resurrection. There is another, none other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. And then also, Jesus says in John 6, uh, 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So then in verse 7, it says, Then Jesus said to them again, Okay, uh, because they seemed like they weren't listening. Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. So many of the religious leaders in Jesus' time were false religious leaders. They were hypocrites. They we're not telling the truth to the people. Jesus said in verse nine, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. All right, Psalm 23. I'll lay down in green pastures. That's the word of God. As you're studying the word of God, and you're feeding on the word of God, even as a sheep would, uh, they would meditate. Uh, we call it meditation for us spiritually, but for a, a sheep, they would, uh, as even cows do, I think, is regurgitate the, 
the uh, grass and so on and just keep chewing on it. Well, hopefully you and I are meditating on the Word of God in these green pastures of the Word of God. Verse 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So Jesus has come that we might have eternal life, but also he has come that we might have abundant Christian life. Uh, I would not uh, give my life for anything else than the way the Lord has led me through the years from a, a child. He prepared me for the ministry that I would have. And I, right now I'm a principal of a Christian school and um, teacher. And this time of year is very tiring. I appreciate your uh, prayers. Uh, it, it's it's tough sometimes, be, but we're working with young people that I can see God's hand upon them, and He's going to use them, and so uh, that's a ministry that God has given me. But it's abundant life, and I, I would encourage you if you're not looking for God's perfect will in your life, you need to. And so that you can know beyond a shadow of a doubt you're doing what God wants you to do. He has abundant life for us. And that's so wonderful. And he says that he is the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thy, thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies and Thou anointest my head with oil. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Verse 12. But a, th a hireling, a person's into the ministry for money, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Praise God for the good shepherd. And even pastors of churches are the under shepherds, but Jesus is really the shepherd of all the churches. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. We're told that uh, good shepherds know uh, their sheep. I mean, some have thousands of them, but uh, they know them by name, and they call them by name. <laughs> That's just amazing to me. Well, you know, uh, God knows us by our name. He says that he's numbered the hairs of our head. In other words, he knows every detail about our body. He knows our aches and pains. He knows our weak points. He knows our strong points. He knows uh, what has happened in the past in our life. Maybe you were abused as a child. Uh, verbal abuse can be abuse. Uh, maybe they said, you know, you'll never amount to something. Or you're just, you know, parents sometimes they use the wrong words and, and say things they shouldn't say. They're, uh, the children that are abused are like uh, one-fourth of the girls and boys are 
abused by relatives usually, usually when they're drinking alcohol or taking drugs and abusing alcohol or taking drugs. And you know what? Uh, God knows that. He knows everything about you. He's our good shepherd. He calls us by name and we respond to him. Uh, sometimes people get mixed up in things. I heard of a lady that was a Christian lady and she got a, mixed up in Mormonism. But the Lord spoke to her and showed her that that was wrong and that it wasn't the truth. And she came out of that. That was the Holy Spirit speaking to her. That was the Good Shepherd drawing her back to himself. And I know my sheep and I'm known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. He died on the cross for us to save us. He knew there was no other way. It was hard for him because he was totally human, but totally God. And at one point in the garden, remember, he prays, Oh God, if there's any other, other way, then Jesus, uh, you know, then dying, that's what he's saying for us. But he did, he knew that was the only way. And he went to the cross for us. Hello, Esther. It's good to see that you guys are listening. The Lord bless you. And verse 16, And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. See, isn't that wonderful? Uh, he's talking not only about the Jews. The Jews um, were... Many of them, like John the Baptist, when he was baptizing, many of the Jews were baptized and were followers of God. And then when Jesus came, then they followed Jesus. Uh, <clears throat> but Jesus is saying that after this, after his death and resurrection, uh, he will go uh, also to... Uh, he had gone some, the Samaritans and others uh, were coming to him as Gentiles. But he's also saying that uh, the church age is going to be starting after his death and resurrection. And many Gentiles will come into the kingdom of God. And we will be one in Christ. What, right now, in the church age, if you're saved as a Jew, you're saved the same way that we are. Uh, and it's always been that way by faith. Uh, in the Old Testament, they were never saved by keeping the law. Nobody can keep the law. Paul made that very clear in Romans. No, it says the just shall live by faith. And then the same thing in, in, uh, for us as Christians, we're saved by faith. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. And so that's what he's talking about here. We're in one body uh, right now in the church age. <clears throat> Verse 18, and he says, uh, or 17, Therefore my father loves me because I lay my I lay down my life that I may take it again. So Jesus uh willingly laid down his life for us and took it up again. No one takes it from me. We say that he was killed, but in reality he willingly went to the cross but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment I have received from my Father. Therefore, there was a division again among the Jews because of these sayings, and many of them said, He has a demon and is mad. Why do you listen to him? 
And others said, these are not the words of one who has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Which he had just done. Now it was the feast of dedication in Jerusalem. And it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in uh, Solomon's porch. And then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness to me. The miracles and the good things that he was doing. The Bible says he went about doing good, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice. Those that were there that were listening came to him. Remember that even when he was dying on the cross, uh, one of his sheep came to him on one side of the cross. And I believe that is like the world. Uh, Jesus in the, is in the middle of the cross. And usually there were a lot of people that were being crucified all at the same time. But this, there was only three at that time. There was two robbers on either side of Jesus. And the one turned to him, to the other one. They were both mocking at first, if you read the parallel Gospels. But then the one stopped mocking Jesus. And he turned to the other uh, one and he said, we deserve what we're getting. This man doesn't deserve what he, he, he was saying, that he was different. He was perfect. And then he turned to Jesus and said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He believed that Jesus was the Messiah. And Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. That is the way it is. There's two crosses on either side of Jesus. And that's a picture of the people in the world. Some are receiving the message and receiving Jesus' voice. Many are called, it says, few are chosen. Well, you're called, uh, people are, uh, to salvation, but you have a choice to make. And those that answer the call are the ones that are chosen. You have to pick up the phone. You have to say, yes, I want Jesus as my Savior. And that is so wonderful if you do that. And, of course, they are. then you're the sheep that are of the shepherd Jesus, our shepherd. Therefore, there was a division again, and so on. Some were saying that he was demon-possessed, and others were realizing that he was exactly who he said he was. And they said, well, uh, so this took place uh, in the Feast of Dedication. There were seven feasts altogether, and we're getting closer to the Passover. Then the Jews uh, surrounded him and said to him, how long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Well, I think he's told it pretty plainly by his actions, his works, his miracles, his uh, raising the dead, uh, walking on water, feeding the 5,000, all of these things and more, but casting out demons. Jesus answered them, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe because you are not my of my sheep. I said to you, my sheep hear my voice and know them, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. These people that are believing in Jesus as their Savior and their Messiah, and uh, the religious leaders trying to take them away from the truth. 
I and my father are one. Can you imagine how upset they, when he said that? Well, we believe that with all our heart, and that's why we baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works I have shown you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, because you being a man make yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, You are God's. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father uh, sanctified and sent into the world, you are blasphemy because I said, I am the Son of God? All right, so uh, there's a passage in the Old Testament and... Uh, yeah, let's see if I can see the reference for you. The uh, verse 34, Jesus answered, is written in, okay, that would be in Psalm 82, 6, that he says that uh, you are gods, okay? Now, um, Paul makes it clear that there are no gods at all. Some people, uh, they say that, uh, uh, you know, they worship their uh, idols and they say they're a god and so on. But Paul says, in reality, there's no gods, even though people say that there are. There's only one God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But uh, the people revere something as uh more important than something else. And actually, as far as God is concerned, the Jewish people that were believing in him, he said that in their in a sense, they're like a God. In other words, uh, they're the children of God. And it says that we're joint heirs with Christ and uh, he, we will rule and reign with him. And he said that to the Jewish people as well that believed in him. And so uh, why is it that these religious leaders think it's so strange that Jesus said that he is God, he is the son of God? Well, even to this day, 2,000 years later, almost 2,000 years later, uh, these people, the Jewish people still are not believing as a nation that he is God, but and that God has a son, but they will. And uh, so uh, therefore they sought again to seize him, but he escaped out of their hand. <laughs> okay. And um, so I think that uh, we went a little fast over some of this here. Uh, verse 37, I want to make sure, if I do the works of my Father, but if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works, and so on. We, we talked about the works that Jesus is doing, and uh, the Father is in me, and I in him. Therefore they sought again to seize him, but he escaped out of their hand. It wasn't God's time, and, and he would die on the cross and allow himself to be killed. Uh, and later on on the cross only not to be stoned and because the prophecies about him dying on the on the cross and he went away again beyond the jordan to the place where john was baptizing at first and there he stayed then many came to him and said john performed no sign but all the things that john spoke about this man were true and many believed in him there. Praise God. Are you believing in him yet? It's been many, uh, there's been several books that have been written by lawyers trying to disprove the resurrection. But you know what? They can't disprove it and they come to know Christ as Savior. Where are you at? Have you received Jesus as your Savior yet? 
are you answering the call? Uh, one time, uh, Chuck Smith, the one that helped uh, start Calvary Chapel uh, in that movement there, a movement of the Lord. Uh, someone asked him one time, well, I, I don't know. I think that I, uh, how do I know that I'm chosen by God? God said, or Chuck said, do you believe that Jesus died for you and rose again if you uh, turn from your sin to, to save you, something to that effect, he said. And, well, yes, then you're, ch you're one of the chosen. <laughs> You've answered the call. And uh, so you're his sheep. And so that's as simple as it gets. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time that we've had together. We pray that you'll continue to speak to hearts, even those that are not saved, that they'll receive you. But those that are saved, they'll uh, want that abundant life that you have to offer us when we are saved. We thank you so much for our good shepherd. And thank you that he made it possible that we could go to heaven through his blood on the cross. And so we pray all these things with thanksgiving in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, the Lord bless you folks. And uh, we're just praying that God will use you mightily. Praise the Lord, Esther, for what the Lord is doing through the ladies. And uh, tell your husband, Emmanuel, to bless him and in the ministry. The Lord is blessing him in the ministry God's given you guys. Uh, we'll see you, God willing, tomorrow.